Good day, folks. I'm Pastor George from the Shetland Gospel Tabernacle, and what a joy it is to meet you and greet you again through Chet TV. Today I want to share some thoughts that I trust will bless you and maybe even challenge you. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the art of learning. That's right, the art of learning. So just pretend you're in a classroom today and I as the instructor will lead you down that road, the art of learning. And I want to take you way, way back in the Old Testament to the book of Deuteronomy. And, and Moses is speaking. And here's what Moses said. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, at the end of every seven years, in the year for canceling debts during the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, you shall read this law. Okay, you shall read this law before them in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women, and children, and the aliens living in your towns, so they can listen and learn to fear the Lord your God. Listen and learn to fear the Lord your God, and follow carefully all the words of this law. Their children who do not know this law must hear it and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Wow, the art of learning. Awesome. I love to learn new things every day. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books that I read. At any given time, I've got two, three, four books open. And uh, it's because I, I want to learn. I want to expand. I, I want to recall history. I just want to enjoy the moment as well in which I live. But even at 73 years of age, I still feel that there is an art to learn. And there are advantages to learn and to know. And so Moses, this great, great man of God, passes the baton of leadership to a young man called Joshua. And Moses writes a law, and this law is to be read every seven years after they reached the promised land. What was the law? I want to read it again. It's important that we kind of get this not just into our mind but into our spirit. He said, assemble the people. And notice it's an inclusive group. Assemble the people, men, women, and children, and the aliens or the foreigners or the immigrants living in your towns so they can listen and learn to fear the Lord your God. Jumping down to 13, their children who do not know this law must hear it and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. In recent weeks at our church, I called them the little flock at the Chetwin Gospel Tabernacle, I've been doing some, some teaching on hearing, listening, and responding to the voice of God. You see, a lot of people may hear the voice, but aren't really listening. And if we aren't listening to what God is saying, chances are we're going to miss the message. I love nature, and sometimes I will stand by a river and fly fish. And I can instantly hear the sound of the river. But when I hear it, I pause to listen. And when I'm listening to that river, I am mystified 
by how beautiful the sound when it comes to my heart and comes to my spirit. I hear it, and now I'm listening to the music of that river. And so in Deuteronomy here, Moses is talking about not just listening, not just hearing rather, but listening. My wife will sometimes say to me, George, you hear me, but you aren't listening. You're not getting the message. And uh, like, open the refrigerator door sounds a lot different than closing the bathroom door. We hear, but we don't often listen. And so Moses is very, very specific. Here's what he says. I want you to learn to fear the Lord your God. Wow! So to fear the Lord your God, or to respect Him, and to worship Him and honor Him, takes time and energy, and sometimes I would suggest a direct act of the will. The nation of Israel had to learn to fear the Lord your God. Wow, that's, that's awesome. I became a born-again Christian when I was only seven years old. And um, by faith as a child, I said, Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I want you to come into my life. And all of those years, I have been learning, meditating, listening to the voice of God, reading the scriptures, reading good Christian books, listening to great teachers of the Word of God. And so I learn, I adapt, I adopt, and God blesses me through that ministry. And so Paul, the apostle, many years after Moses wrote his word, kind of got on board with this act of learning. While Paul's focus was on the good news, the gospel, his preaching the gospel took him down the roads of diversity. It was a difficult path, but Paul learned while on the journey, and one of the greatest lessons he learned was that of being contented. Now, you've got to understand that Paul was persecuted. He was put in prison. He was nigh death. He was hungry. And all of this was in presenting and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after a life of ministry, here's what Paul said. He said, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. See, learning is a lifetime journey. Amen. And we learn through difficulties. We learn through hardships. We learn through joy. We, we learn through celebrations. And it's an act sometimes of the will and the mind. And Paul said, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Can you imagine Paul in a Roman jail, knowing he is going to be beheaded for his faith? He's able to say from that lonely, damp dungeon of a Roman cell, I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. We think sometimes that we have it tough, but let our heart just cry out to God and say, oh, but Lord, I am content. And on another occasion, he said very similar words, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. The secret of being content. God said, be still and know that I am God. I heard a local pastor this past summer make this statement, to be still is different than doing nothing. Think about it. And for you and I to be still takes effort to get the white noise out of our minds. And to be still is to meditate, to concentrate, to be into the Word of God. To do nothing really doesn't take a lot of effort. And so I'm learning every day through the precious Word and through prayer to be content. Paul's life was filled with the joy of the Lord. 
And because of the joy of the Lord that was in his heart, it caused him to be content. Whether he had plenty, whether he had nothing, whether he was persecuted, whether he was misquoted, whether he was beaten, whether his own people turned their back on this great, great man, he learned to be content. Difficulty sometimes is a great way to help us to learn to be like Jesus, to be the man and to be the woman and the young person that God would have us to be. In fact, here's what Paul said in Philippians. He said, whether I am well fed or hungry, whether I am living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Oh, I, I just praise God today because even in our own personal lives, my wife and I went through some difficult times. And some of you know the story of our great grandson who was born with a, with a defective heart. And we prayed and we hoped that God would touch him and heal him and bring him back 100%. But God chose not to heal him. And so my wife and I and the mother of the child and the father of the child and all of our family, we learned to be content with the fact that it was God's choice not to heal our great grandson. The reason? I will never know, but I have learned to be content knowing that God is in control. And so the Apostle Paul, though he penned these words many, many years ago, is the same lesson that we have to learn today. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Paul was so interested in getting the lesson out to even younger Christians about the importance of pursuing the good things in life. He, he said, he said to, to young Timothy one day, he said, Tim, you need to study to show yourself approved unto God. You have to learn to be content. You have to come into the presence of God. You have to be still and know that God is is God. And, 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 and he said also, train yourself. <laughs> I love this. And I shared it with my congregation so many times. He's saying to young Timothy, he's saying, study to show yourself approved unto God and then train yourself to be godly. Christian friends, if you're struggling today with whatever is in your life, maybe it's because we have kind of put God on the shelf we are saved, and that's all that matters. But to learn to be content, to move forward, to be progressive and aggressive in your faith is something that takes time and training and meditation and the Holy Spirit to be dominant and prominent in our lives. In fact, the word content comes from a Greek word that simply means entirely self-sufficient. I have to qualify that statement, though. Entirely self-sufficient in the knowledge of the all-sufficiency of God's grace and His mercy and His supernatural power being unleashed in our lives. Friends, got to conclude here, but just pray that we will continually learn, move forward with the Scriptures, and there are so many avenues available to us now to get away from the white noise of life, get alone with God, pause in His presence, and move forward by faith. Have a great day. God's blessings upon you. Amen.